Hello, and welcome to this lesson on iteration rendering in Svelte. In this video, we'll learn how to loop over list data and render the content to the browser. We can control the flow of our application by looping through a list of items and rendering elements for each item in the list directly in the markup. For example, let's say we want to create an app with a list of the latest films. We want each list item to be a card that contains a film name, a description, an image, and a link to its own page. It would be inefficient to create a card manually each time we add a film. Instead, we want to create a template of what the card should look like. Then, we want Svelte to render the card for each film in the list and automatically fill in the details from the data. To loop through items in a list, Svelte gives us the each statement block. It uses the each keyword as its statement type. As its expression, it uses list as a list items alias. The list is our list of items, like an array. Alias is an alias that refers to the current list item in the loop. The list in the each block must have the same name as the list we define in the script section. But alias can be named whatever we want. As an example, we'll loop over a list of usernames. We'll start in the script section and define an array called users with the two names John and Jane. For the each block, we do a pair of curly braces, then a hash, then each. Then another pair of curly braces, forward slash, and each. OK, now let's create the loop. Users is our list, so users. As, and then the alias. Let's call it username. We'll be able to use username to access the name in the array each time the loop iterates. To keep the example simple, we'll just render the name out to the page in an h2 tag. If we save and head over to the browser, we'll see the two headings with the names from the array. So, each time the loop iterated, it created a new heading and populated it with the name in the array. At some point, we may want to use the index number of a list item. Svelte makes that index available to us through a second alias. All we need to do is add the index after the item and separate the two with a comma. From there, we can use the index the same way we would use the item. To demonstrate, let's add an index to our example. So, just comma, then x for the index. We'll also add it to the heading to render it on the page. If we save the file and head over to the browser, we'll see each user's index number in front of their name. Of course, in JavaScript, an index always starts at zero. So, if we want the numbers to display correctly, we can just add one in the string interpolation. If we go back to the browser, we can see the numbers now start at one. Looping through a list of objects is the same as looping through a list. The only difference is that we access object properties through the alias with dot notation. To demonstrate, let's replace the names in our array with objects that contain two properties each the first name and the last name. The each loop itself can stay the same, but we need to access the names through dot notation. So, curly braces, username, then a dot, and then first name. We'll do the same for the last name. So, curly braces, username, then a dot, and last name. If we save the file and head over to the browser, we'll see the first and last names of each user. When we loop through a list, Svelte keeps track of the elements it loops over with its own internal index. When changes are made to the elements, Svelte will replace their positions in the DOM according to that internal index. This can cause problems in the behavior of our application. So, Svelte allows us to use a unique key to give each element a unique ID. To do that, we add a unique value from the list item in parentheses at the end of the loop. Note that we don't separate the key from the rest of the expression with a comma. To demonstrate, let's add an ID property to each of the objects in our example. Now, we can use the ID in the loop expression at the end. So, parentheses, username, dot ID. The change is behind the scenes, so if we go to the browser, it still looks the same. 
Without a key, Svelte tries to minimize element moving. It tries to patch or reuse elements of the same type, in place, as much as possible. With a key however, Svelte can identify nodes with the unique ID, when it's diffing the new DOM tree, with the old one. Keys are important to handle UI updates, correctly and efficiently. Although it's not strictly required, it's good practice to always use a key. Svelte allows us to use conditional rendering blocks inside our loops. There's nothing special we need to do, we can just create a conditional block inside an each block. And because the conditional block is then inside the loop, it will have access to all the aliases. To demonstrate, let's color the first user's heading blue. Actually, let's use the Svelte Snippets extension that we installed in the Environment Setup video. So, type if, then select the if else block and press enter. As the condition, we'll just check if the ID property is 1. If the ID is 1, it means it's the first user, so we want to add a class to it. Let's copy the heading and paste it into the if block, then add a class called first. For any other ID, we don't want to color the text. Finally, let's create a style block, target the first class, and set the text color to blue. If we save the file and take a look in the browser, the John Doe heading is blue. So, the if block worked correctly. Alright, that concludes this lesson on iteration rendering in Svelte. In the next video, we'll learn about reactivity with reactive statements and declarations. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.